Good morning and welcome to worship at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Jean Deval Donaldson. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and we are in the Vancouver that's in Washington. This congregation is a reconciling in Christ congregation, which means um, lots of things, but in a week like this week, wow. Um, each of us is invited to experience Christ's redeeming love. We are invited to bring our doubts, disappointments, transgressions, losses, and pain, and lay them at the foot of Christ's cross. The building is on the ancestral homelands of the Cowlitz, Chinook, and Klickitak nations, and we offer our gratitude and respect to those who first stewarded the land, probably even before their times. We have a variety of announcements. Next week is Pentecost, and traditionally we wear red. Um, you could wear yellow, orange, blue, not black, I suppose, white, um, colors of flame. And so if you want to bring flowers to help decorate and make a festive space, um, you can bring them and then take them with you. That would be wonderful. And then um, between services is our last, I think, of this program year, all congregation um, faith formation. And I know that Jean is leading an activity that helps people think about different perspectives. So I invite you to that. It's between services. The special meeting is after the second service. It will be between 12.15, 12.30, we'll start that. And um, it is a special meeting, not the annual meeting, so that means we have two things to vote on. And they're the only things that can be voted on, even though we'll have conversation about other matters. And the two things to vote on are, is a small change to help our bylaws match reality and um, how we work forward as council members. And then the second one is more substantive in that we will talk about reallocating some funds to take care of some of the major uh, maintenance things that we have to have done. So hopefully you get to participate. And there's a couple of people that have talked to me about being a member that maybe we can talk this week because I was planning on having new members on Pentecost. So you're both in the same pew. Anyway. Um, the other thing is that the um, property committee is really trying to clean things up. And so they're asking everyone who might have stored something in the building some year past uh, to look at what has been gathered in the middle section of the fellowship hall to make sure that it doesn't get given away. So we're asking people to identify their things and take them home, um, please, because we're running out of space for storage. So that's happening. And I have an uh, announcement addendum, which you online don't have, but once you are able to look in the newsletter, these things are all in the newsletter as well. Um, one is so you put it on your refrigerator um, when we're doing inside worship and outside worship in the month of June. So in, on June 12th, we go to one service. It will be inside. On June 19th, weather permitting, We'll be outside under the tent, and then the 26th, what are we going to be if we're alternating? Inside, yep. Um, and Evan and I are proposing to start a Wednesday night worship, an informal, different sort. Um, exper it's our experiment, and it'll be at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. If the weather allows us to, we'll start on June 15th because we won't have the tent up. However... After that, we'll have the tent up, and we could probably meet any old Wednesday as long as it's not freezing cold. Um, some people have said that they would help with different worship leadership if only they were trained. So Evan and I are pulling together a training, and in the uh, uh, newsletter or your announcement addendum are some possible dates. I need people to let me know that they're interested, and then we'll pick a date from that, I decided to try it that way instead of picking just one. And, but I am picking the date of June 11th at 10.30 to have a conversation with anyone who would like to 
um, be a home communion sharing person. And our new questions. You'll notice in-house that there's different color sticky notes because even though you can fill in lots of timeline sorts of things, the questions to just kind of deepen and, and uh, widen the conversation are the yellow ones in-house are times we were at our best to describe that and put a, a year or a year range. Um, times we were not our best selves on purple and times that we struggled. They are somewhat different. Um, and that's on the, the, what I'm calling melon color. It has all sorts of names. Are there any other announcements that I'm not thinking about? We only have a couple of more weeks where there'll be the choirs rehearsing and they will sing for the last time this season on the 12th, right? So that's not gonna be around. And I took liberty again as an outgrowth of our baptism to change out the um, Thanksgiving for baptism and have a memorial of lament that I will begin with a reading by Amanda Gorman. I think that's all. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is alive. The spirit is a force of love, wild and creative. She tears down the walls of our hearts and builds up courage from within. The spirit is a practice of freedom, daring and audacious. She nurtures gentle strength that our hope may thrive and justice be our aim. The reading is one that, I, from what I understand, Amanda wrote because of the last two weeks and um, was published in New York Times. It's called Hymn for the Hurting. Everything hurts. Our hearts shadowed and strained, minds made muddied and mute. We carry tragedy terrifying and true, and yet none of it is new. We knew it as home, as horror, as heritage. Even our children cannot be children, cannot be. Everything hurts. It's a hard time to be alive, and even harder to stay that way. We're burdened to live out these days, while at the same time blessed to outlive them. This alarm is how we know we must be altered, that we must differ or die, that we must triumph or try. Thus, while hate cannot be terminated, it can be transformed into a love that lets us live. May we not just grieve, but give. May we not just ache, but act. May our signed right to bear arms never blind our sight from shared harm. May we choose our children over chaos. May another innocent never be lost. Maybe everything hurts, our hearts shadowed and strange. But only when everything hurts, may everything change. And we pray. God of resurrection, we remember before you those who have died in recent weeks. 21 in Uvalde, Texas. The 10 people killed 11 days before that in Buffalo, New York. The shooting in Laguma Woods in California two weeks ago where one died. We commend them to your eternal love. Grant healing and wholeness to the survivors who were wounded or traumatized 
especially the children, and restore all whose spirits are maimed by such violence, that we may serve as your arms of care to those in distress, we pray. for police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and all who offer compassionate aid in situations of tragedy. Keep them safe from harm and give them courage and sound judgment as they act that we may join in support of those who risk their lives for others. We pray, make, make us, us instruments, instruments of, of your peace. God of forgiveness, we ask your mercy on those who fired the weapons with your grace transform those who from malice or illness inflict violence on others, console their families. Believing in your power to make all things new, we pray. Make us instruments, instruments of your peace. God of true might and redemptive mercy, receive our prayers and grant us to become your instruments of peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll observe a moment of silence. And it is to our grief that our newest hymnal has three or four pages of laments and prayers for after gun, um, gunfire. But we have hope in Jesus Christ and in a different reality being stronger than the pain of these times. And so we sing to that hope. Please stand as you are comfortable. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Creator, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, mercy. Lord of mercy, mercy on us. 
we pray. Holy One, our source of life and love, build up our faith. You emptied yourself so that others could be filled. Teach us humility and give us a spirit of service for the good of the community of faith. May we dare to believe things can be done differently. May we be willing to take necessary risks for others. May we persevere through our mistakes and missteps with joy as our companion and wisdom as our guide. We place our trust in you. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of the word that will be somewhat expanded, and I decided to read it from the Inclusive Bible because I forgot to go get the message. It is from Philippians, but begins a few verses before what we have in the worship folder, so on, in 127. Conduct yourselves then in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. If you do, whether I come and see you myself or hear about your behavior from a distance, it will be clear that you're standing firm in unity of spirit and exerting yourselves with one accord for the faith of the gospel without being intimidated by your enemies. Standing together without fear is an indication that they will be destroyed and you will be saved. It's a divine signal that God, on behalf of our Savior, has given you the privilege of believing and suffering for Christ. You're now experiencing the same struggle and that you saw in me, and now here, that I still have. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love or the spirit that we have in common or any tenderness or sympathy can persuade you at all, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing that would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everyone is to be humble. Value others over yourselves, each of you thinking of the interests of others before your own. Your attitude must be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Christ, though in the image of God, didn't deem equality with God something to be clung to, but instead became completely empty and took on the image of oppressed humankind, born into the human condition, found in the likeness of a human being. Jesus was thus humbled, obediently accepting death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted Christ, and gave to Jesus the name above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bend in the heavens and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God, Jesus Christ reigns supreme. Therefore, my dear friends, you who are always obedient to my urging, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, not only when I happen to be with you, but all the more when I am absent. It is God at work in you that creates the desire to do God's will. This is the word of the Lord. To God. And if the children want to meet me over there, we're going to see if I can bring something up. Stephen's playing. So um, 
It's actually going to be a song, a hymn that we're going to sing in a little bit, but it's a hymn. Do you know what hymns are about? Okay. Why do we sing, sing songs? To praise God, yeah. That's what a lot of them are for. Has anyone ever noticed anything else in it? Okay, I lost my one thing. I, there it is. Okay. Um, has anyone ever noticed anything else in the words of the songs? Yes, they tell stories about how God has been at, at work in the world and about Jesus. And when, um, in the old days, there weren't the same thing as books and hymnals and things. And so singing was one of the ways to help people remember the stories and um, to keep reminding themselves of God. And so in the scripture this morning is a part that is considered a hymn. It's a hymn from back before Paul was around. So this is almost 2,000 years ago kind of hymn. And um, I started wondering, I wonder what it would sound like. Can I find a 2,000-year-old hymn on here, do you think? Nah, no. Nah. So anything I hear on here is, um, I, can you hear it? Good. I mean, hopefully not. OK. It's ads. And I don't want you to hear the ads. There was no way to, OK. So I found um, this as just a piece of music. Let it keep going. So, do you know from what part of the world this kind of music is? What? I that maybe. Uh, she's gonna sing in a minute, if I stopped it. Um, this is music from the Middle East. But it's also music that is in, well, let's see if she can see. Do you hear that? What's, what language do you think that is? Yeah, you know, I'm going to test you. So this is Hebrew. So it is what Jewish people would sing. This is a Jewish group. And um, when I looked at the words, it looked to me like this kind of music would go with the words in our scripture today. It's celebrating a little um, baby that's been born and angels being around the baby and um, the relationship with God. And that's not the same as our scripture, but, um, but um, I just thought, huh, I've never stopped to listen to Jewish music before. And I, it hit me a few years ago that some of our music might not actually be like Jesus would have sung. No, he'd, he'd probably be singing more like um, the music here. And so even though we have lots of music to help us know the stories, it's probably good for us to remember that God works through all sorts of music and also to take time to learn from other cultures like the Jewish people. So I, I was just, wanted to share something that I experienced this week, no other reason, all right? So let us pray. Holy God, thank you for the many ways you are at work in the world and through all sorts of music. Do you delight our hearts as we sing your praise or hear in song stories of your love. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen. Okay, thanks. So I did learn that you can look at Jewish things. And that one of my favorite uh, psalms is on there, 139. I thought about showing you that one. Anyway, take care. See you later. And that's purposefully one-sided because I didn't like the other side. <laughs> it was eh. Yeah. You're too old for it.
Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to come together to worship you and praise you. We give you thanks for one another and for the ways your word reaches across time, across space, to enter our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. And before I think preaching, I totally forgot to say um, about Memorial Day and about giving honor and respect to those who have given of their lives over the, the years, the many, many years, um, in, or, or to support the safety of our, our nation. So um, e even though we did a memorial, we also have those memories in our minds as well and the families that have been impacted. All right. So this reading from Philippians, just a reminder if you weren't here last week, Philippians is a, a, a letter that Paul wrote to the people of Philippi. And he was in jail, is in jail, and the people have also been going through some hard times. And mostly his writings are about his great love and reassurance to the people. But you hear in part of what I backed up into um, that there have been some tensions, that these followers of Jesus Christ have been having outside forces either taunt them or persecute them or we don't know what, but when Paul was in Philippi, he was beaten and he was um, put in jail for doing the work, just for talking about what it was that Jesus had done in the world. Oh yeah, and he decided to heal that one, per one uh, slave person and ruin the income of her owners. But overall, he was not causing great havoc in town. Um, and this happened. So in the, the reading I backed into, we hear that the people of this area were being persecuted as well, um, just as he had been. And we know from 2 Corinthians that they were being severely persecuted. So no doubt when you are in danger, sometimes you do things or don't do things because you want to protect your safety. And so I hear in some of Paul's words that he is encouraging these people, these followers of Jesus, to stand strong together, to get courage from one another, to continue to live into the promises of Jesus and the teachings that Paul had shared with them and not to be um, shifted from that foundation by anyone or any circumstance. And so this is a letter. It is not a um, theological treatise, but it has important things to tell us today too. Paul talks to the community about having one mind and one purpose and, it's, and, and to be unified. And it's not being uniform. Uh, sometimes this gets used by different faith traditions to say, you better believe the way I do exactly, and you better not bring your doubts, okay? Luckily, as ELCA-type Lutherans, we're pretty comfortable with doubts and, and um, having some serious conversations and wrestling with, with Scripture, but um, it does help. It does matter that we have um, a, a shared understanding of why we exist as a congregation or a denomination or anything. What is it that God has called us to do? Um, why does it matter that we exist as the people of God in a community, in a society that might not understand that unity of faith such as um, love and care and um, concern for people on the margins of society that, that might argue against that. And so um, one of the, the thoughts that came to me with this is, th it's a tired old thing, but I, I still love it, so I'm going to say it. 
Uh, we used to call ourselves the uh, melting pot, but overall, uh, at our best, our country is better as a stew. Okay, I think so. Um, and think about stew, where things aren't all just blobbed together and melted together, but everything is, is just the way it cooked to just the right point at its best, where each piece retains its own flavor and entity. So you have the onion and you have the beef and the potato and the carrot. You can tell my favorite kind of stew there. Um, and tomato. I like tomato base, my husband does not. Um, and so you have all those together and you can taste them each on their own. But they all have been changed a bit by that tomato-ness and, and the onion kind of pervading through, or maybe some garlic too. But uh, so everything is impacted by the others, but everything also is unique. And so you can enjoy the difference in the unity of the stew. And, and I think that's, um, I, I don't feel, and, and the studies I've done and my understanding of, of God isn't that we are all to be uh, robots that look and act and, and think exactly like one another, but that we come together in our broad diversity and at our best, we are very diverse. And we come together grounded in our faith and our understanding of ourselves as followers of Jesus. And those, that purpose, that reason for being, overcomes all the differences that we have among us. And at our best, we learn to listen to one another. Like um, a couple years ago, right during COVID, I was talking about um, braver angels and trying to have civil conversation between red and blue. And some of us in this congregation this last week participated in a workshop to learn about how we have our own biases inside of us that get in the way of having civil conversation. And so it was a, a, a workshop to get us to notice and move beyond that. And I think that's a lot of what the church needs to do as well. Um, so Jesus, I mean, Paul also talked about the people being like Jesus who humbled himself. All right, you and I are not Jesus. Let's just admit that up front. And there's no way we are going to be like Jesus fully. We were not totally um, above the fray of humanity and come to earth and give that up and take on the frail um, body of a human being as a baby. And we, we we're not we're not that. There's no way. We're not those people. But um, God, through Jesus, entrusts each and every one of us to have a part in a society that is different than what is so often seen in our society. And um, he talks in here about being humble and about putting people before yourselves. And that's very good and it can be used very harmfully. It can be used harmfully um, when people who do not have much power are told by people with power that you should just be happy serving. This is God's role for you to do because you are to serve as Jesus served. And that's what happens too often is someone tells someone else. But this passage is about looking at our own self and not beating ourselves up as sometimes Lutherans and Catholics and other people can do uh, with guilt and such, but, um, but not putting ourselves higher than someone else or better than. And it's not putting our self-interests above the good of the whole. And at our best as church, we are looking out for the good of the whole in our congregation, yes, but also how we engage in the world and the good of other people. And it's kind of counter to what society often teaches about getting ahead and moving up. Um, today it's been kind of strange because most of the people helping 
um, are on vacation, the, the ones that usually step up. Thank you for stepping up um, at, at the last minute there. Yeah, I was thinking I can't sing again. Um, but I was going to, if I had more time and, and such, to bring a, a ladder here. So I have to have you imagine a ladder that reaches up. And um, in our society, we have conversation about you know, climbing the ladder, moving forward, um, gaining in power, privilege, and, and income. And so sometimes we think of people high on the ladder being somehow better than or proving themselves more than um, people at other places on the ladder. Um, it's just part of the American way. And, and yet what I'm hearing here with Paul is that we would take the ladder and instead of trying to climb up and get past one another, we, we would put it down as a bridge between people. And that no one's higher than or better than or seen as more worthwhile than anyone else. I think that's the type of humility that Paul is talking about. And that does not fit our country. And in fact, some people politicize that. But the words in scripture, the words of faith, the words of Jesus, and then now Paul translating, those are the words that should guide us and ground us and shape how we move forward in life. And maybe it influences our politics, but the grounding needs to be in being followers of Jesus, about being good citizens in the kingdom of God, and asking questions of ourselves and our choices and those things we support over and against the radical inclusion and love and reaching out of Jesus. We are not Jesus, and we are always going to have difficult times with some of that. And sometimes, yeah, we might be in a political conversation, whatever our side is, and we may be getting riled up and it is hard to see the humanity in the other person or to assume that there are good reasons behind some of their choices or that maybe we need to listen to see where one another agree. But in those moments when we feel ourselves wanting to lash out at somebody, I'm not gonna say what would Jesus do. I'm gonna say, take a deep breath and inhale and ask for the Holy Spirit and say, help me, God. Help me to see this other as your beloved child. Help us connect and find ways to focus our faith and our lives on these things that we know from you to put other people above ourselves, thinking about the good of the whole, especially when it might be contrary to our personal desires. With God, all things are possible. Amen.
I'll say it again for online. Now we join in the words of faith from ancient times. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. beloved teacher, show us where we are blind to ourselves and ignorant of the harm we do to others, and make us a blessing rather than a burden to those we serve. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. At the name of Jesus, all creation stands in awe. As a child instinctively knows its parent, so does all of earth and heaven know its creator. May we glorify our God in all we think do and say. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. All around us are the tangible signs of your love, a cool breeze, a whiff of fresh flowers, a breathtaking sunrise, the sweetness of the earth's fruits. Enliven us to all that you have created and make us joyful to be a part of your beautiful world. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. God of the promise and word and sacrament, we pray for the church. Give us a voice, your voice, to plead for a society marked by justice and sustained by cooperation among diverse peoples. Train us to resist the lure of brutal force, that by your spirit we may become words and signs of your mercy. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Christ of suffering and pain, of resurrection and restoration, Be close to those who need to know your healing presence and give your particular blessing to those whom we name today. Linda, Kyle, Lois, Patrick, Janice, Annie, Gloria, Janae, Tyra, Reagan, Neil, Martha, Gerald, Kelly, Dana, Sandra, Kathy, Carolyn, Richard, Darlene, Carol, David, Joel, Lynette, Betty, Joe, Catherine, Lenora, Mary, Patty, Jan, Joanne, Marilyn, Adeline, Marilyn, Tosi, Darren, Sharon, Connie, Carl, Angelos, Catherine, Three and her mother, Charlie, Cheryl, and those we name before you now. Cara, Aaron, Greta, Paul. Risen Lord, as your saints live their lives to you, so give us a purpose to which we would dedicate our own lives Hearten us by their steadfast example and join us in eternal communion when our race is completed. Risen Lord, for what else do the people of God pray? Risen Lord. for all the places where there are environmental um, disasters underway or, or dangers, and where there are places of human disaster and dangers, help us learn to be 
your presence a counter voice, to not be overcome with fear or to give in to compassion fatigue. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers. Make us humble like you and zealous for your gospel. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. So with the offerings, um, I just want to give thanks. On days like today, it just really underscores um, the importance of all the people that do the behind the scene things. So um, I give thanks for all those that do that or step up when there's a, a gap. In the middle of all that hurts, the heart of God manifests through among us, through the sharing of our resources, in shared laughter and collective weeping, in practices of care and connection, the love of God makes a way for us through the labyrinth of this life. With gratitude, we bring our offerings and dedicate them to God and one another. Faithful one, your grace carries us through the unimaginable. When we fear we cannot bear the destruction that surrounds, you sustain our spirits. When we struggle to perceive the way to justice and healing, you speak through prophets ancient and new. For all the ways life persists in the midst of everything that deadens, we bring our gifts with thanks. Amen. And I noticed at the first service that the words of today from the um, in flesh, the liturgy that matters, are so fitting to circumstances, and yet they were written weeks ago. So I, it seems like a God moment when they come together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send your spirit to fill us with the joy of the resurrection. Grant us hope beyond our comprehension. Bless these gifts of bread and wine so that the endless life and love of Jesus may dwell in us and flow from us through acts of love for our neighbors. Holy God, holy love, holy wonder, we give you more praise than we can utter as we await that great day when the feast of your love has no walls, no exceptions, no end, when we gather with Christ by the Spirit and no life in you. Amen. Amen. So in confidence, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father Creator in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And as is our norm, before we sing, if a couple of, okay, we have one person and, <coughs> okay, we're covered, sorry. Well, you can come up and I won't. Come on. reminder that um, this table, this meal, this is of Jesus. And so Jesus opened his arms wide for everyone, ate with everyone, loved everyone. And so everyone is invited to come forward and participate. We don't put up barriers. Um, so if you're at home, hopefully you have your festive beverage and bread product, and you will trust that the Holy Spirit that joins us together across time and space um, and is in our intentions and the words that this is Christ's body given for you, this is Christ's blood shed for you. And if you are present and didn't pick up an individual, um, little container you can come forward we don't have ushers so you're just going to come forward as the spirit moves you um, oh except for there we now have a stand-up not a comedian a stand-up usher and so and so starting from the back forward it, she will let you know when it's time to come forward to give a little order um, let's see we have gluten bread we're going to have gluten free bread wine and grape juice in our new grape juice pitcher from uh, Ann Giles. Mm -hmm. So uh, come now for all is ready.
give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll come in here. Yes, sorry. As a whole earth groans for freedom, we will find our way through practices of love. Love that is generous. Love that is bold. Love that is reciprocal and risky. Love that does not abandon nor neglect, but is fulfilled in the joy of giving and receiving. Seek liberation for all life. Let us go and live with faith in the name of God, creator, savior, and advocate. Let us go forth in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 